Hey everybody, it's Miss C. So at this point, if you've been following along with all of our notes and all of our classes, then at this point you can draw about six things. A cylinder, a sphere, a cube, a rectangular prism, a pyramid, and a cone, which is great. Those are really nice, simple shapes. But everything else in the world is a little bit more complex. <laughs> all these little bits and fingies that I have on the ends of my hand, all the different oddities that you might see in like a pair of antlers, things like that. Um, all the nooks and crannies of your eye or even in a water bottle, all of, uh, all of that nature. All of those are very complex forms. Basically, they have a lot more detail to them than a regular cube or a rectangular prism. So how do you draw those things? Simple. We're going to be talking about breaking down complex forms. Anytime you have something more complex, you can break it down into simpler pieces. For example, my hand. Lots of complex pieces, but let's start with just one finger. Out of all those forms that we've already mentioned, the simple ones that you know how to draw, this one is most similar to a cylinder, but specifically three cylinders, one, two, and three. Now we have four of those that match, so that's 12 and another two on your thumb, so roughly 14 cylinders on your hand. And then the palm itself is relatively square, but has some thickness, meaning it's a funky looking rectangular prism. So by taking those simple shapes and putting them in whatever order you need to, you can break this down and make it easier to draw. So we're gonna be learning about that today. But luckily for you, we're not starting with a hand because that is super crazy. Uh, we're gonna be starting with just my water bottle, my regular normal water bottle. Um, so again, thinking about all the shapes that we already know how to draw, this water bottle is still most like a cylinder. Now I'm gonna get a couple different answers from kids when I ask, but about how many do you think there are? Some kids will say one. They say this whole thing is one cylinder, which is correct, it's one cylinder. Or the kids might say that there's two. There's the upper cylinder and the lower cylinder which is also correct, <laughs> depending on how complex you wanna look at it. And I have one kid who said it's a cylinder, a funky looking cone, and another cylinder. Cylinder, funky looking cone that doesn't really end in a point, and another cylinder, which is still correct. All of those work as different methods. But in this particular case, we're gonna go with that nice one in the middle, two cylinders. So when I'm looking at my little guy, the first thing I'm gonna look at is proportions. Basically, how wide versus how tall, how big is he in comparison to himself? So for how wide he is, that top cylinder is maybe a little taller than how wide he is. If he's that wide, comes down to there, and then just a little bit more for the rest of that top of the cylinder, he's only a little taller than he is wide. Then looking at the bottom cylinder, if I'm looking at how tall the top is, compared to how tall the bottom is. The bottom is a little bit shorter than the top, but not by a crazy amount, just by a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna take that information and I'm gonna draw some of my, uh, my two stacked on top of one another cylinders. So I'm gonna start by drawing my top cylinder. So I'm gonna draw a cylinder like I normally would. Start with an oval, have the sides come down, cool. I need it just a little bit taller than it is wide. So I'm about as tall as I am wide now. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of length there. And then I'm gonna draw the bottom of my cylinder. Now, something fun to remember. There is the half of the bottom that we can't see, or the half of the oval that we can't see at the bottom. That is the back side of our, of our cylinder. So we're looking at the top and we're looking down at it a little bit. So something to note, the top of our bottom cylinder is attached to that same piece and they're concentric meaning they're not they're directly on top of one another they're not offset so over here i can draw myself another oval in that same place to draw the top of my bottom cylinder now if i drew it right here something's wrong with it which is that the proportions <laughs> are off so i need a bigger oval than the one i just drew so we're going to adjust that first if i'm looking at this it's only a little bit skinnier on the bottom than it is on the top. So I'm gonna draw my oval about like so. And my sides are gonna come down about like so. And I know that my bottom cylinder is shorter than my top cylinder by about yay amount. 
So I need to come down to about here-ish. And I have my two stacked on top of one another cylinders. This is technically the whole breaking down. But from here, now I can start adding details to turn this from two stacked cylinders into one cohesive water bottle. So first things first, I can erase all of this stuff right here because all of this is invisible. It's being overlapped. I'm not, I'm not gonna see any of it. Now I'm gonna start looking for all of my details. So detail number one is that this is not at a right angle. This is a slope. So what I can do is I can come over here and I can change this from a right angle to a slope. Looking at that, the other thing I'm gonna notice is that I have a line here and a line here where my shape bends. I already have the one on the bottom. Now I need the one right here. There's two ways to think of this. One is that it's just where the cylinder ends and you can draw it on as a nice curved line or you can consider it as the curvature of our contour. If you remember whenever we were looking at the contours of shapes, way back here, the contours of, around the side of a cylinder matched the edges of the ovals that made up the top and the bottom. So they curve around the front to the same degree that this top edge of our cylinder or the bottom edge of our cylinder are. So for example, if I were to draw my little logo right here, I would draw it on a curved bottom line, not straight across, so that it can curve around the uh, around the cup. But I'm not gonna draw that because that sounds like a detail too far. Um, we're going on basics here. Now, what other details do I see? Okay, I have a silver rim at the bottom. I can treat it the same way that I did this. It is just a small cylinder at the bottom or I can draw it as a line curving around the contour of my bottom cylinder. All right, one more. It might not be super obvious, but there's actually not a straight line here. It tilts in a little bit at the bottom. This section here is a little wider than this section right here. So what I'm gonna do with these two lines is turn them from straight up and down. I'm gonna suck them in a little bit, but this one is gonna be very little. If you do it too much, it looks funky. If you do it just a little bit, it looks like a nice cup. So I'm gonna just bring in those edges just a smidge and erase. There we go. All right, I'm still missing something on my little cup here, which is all the stuff that keeps the water in. This is the most complex portion of my cup. So we're going to treat it carefully and we're gonna go one step at a time. The first step is very similar to all the steps we've done before. We're gonna draw this rim right here. And again, compared to the rest, it's pretty skinny. So we're just gonna draw this nice skinny line around our oval. All right. Now here's the complex part. On the top of my water bottle, this right here is a depression that sinks in. So the first part I'm gonna draw is the oval on the top that is the inside of the rim, which on here is just gonna be an oval that's just a little bit smaller, kind of like we did whenever we were drawing the, the bottom cylinder. I'm just gonna draw this little piece right here. All right, very nice, very nice. But now it has a wall that goes down. And from the angle that we're drawing at, we don't see the front side of this oval that's a little bit further down. This one, you see how my, the tip of my finger disappears while I can see it over here? That means that I'm only gonna draw this half of the oval that's a little bit down. So over here, I'm gonna draw this back half of the oval here. And if it's a little bit hard to see, the easiest way to make that stand out a little bit is to shade it in. I'm not gonna do perfect shading here because I mostly am just doing this so I can see it. Aha! And for other details, uh, there's the place where my mouth gets the water out of. So we're just gonna draw a nice little oval right there. Like, look at that detail. Magical! It's really starting to look like a water bottle. Now there's only one more detail left on my lid. So if you look at my lid again, it isn't a perfect circle slash oval when you're looking at it at an, at an angle because it has these. These are my little lift spots where I can take my lid off and on. 
So I need those in there as well, but they are not a cylinder. They're vaguely rectangular, which means that they are a different shape. They are rectangular prisms. Now, from this side, the rectangular prism is basically just a little square. From this side, they're a little bit longer, which means that we can add this on in a very simple way. So we're going to draw the side that is a square, just coming out the side right here. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're just gonna draw the little side that's a square right there. Bam, it should be just about as tall as my rim. Otherwise it would look funky because this is nice, it's flat right there. It doesn't come up higher than that. Now from there, I can draw the side of my rectangular prism. In this case, I'm gonna draw it going backwards, kind of like this. And then it's gonna have the top edge back like so. And since this is all one solid piece, I'm going to erase the line that I have between those two right here and right here. And now I have my water bottle drawn. From there, I can continue add, adding details such as my logos, such as all the paint chips, such as this dent that is in my water bottle. I can add my sticker. I can add all of those now that I have my shape drawn. And from here on out, what we're gonna ask you to do is to take some other uh, shapes, things like water bottles or whatever that we might have lying around, other artworks, things that are fairly simple to start, and we're gonna be putting them in front of you and you're going to have to do this same breakdown yourself. Now, we will be available, we will be walking around and helping, and if you're working at home and you don't have something, find simple shapes to start, things like cups and vases, and start drawing those first before you try and do something complex like a hand, or a foot, or a nose. But break it down into simple shapes first, things like your cylinder, your sphere, your rectangular prism, and then start adjusting and adding detail from there. Bye.